Hey everyone, Jan here, coding with Jan.com. Checkout extensions, a brand new way of adding features or customizations to the checkout of Shopify Plus stores. And also a very interesting opportunity if you ever wanted to build your own Shopify app, because it's basically an entirely new category and pretty untapped. So today we'll go over why and when to consider checkout extensions in the first place, what they are exactly, and how you can get started today. And I really hope you find some value in this. So let's have a look. All right, so we all know the checkout is where the magic happens. Customers put in their names, their shipping address, they select the payment method, and cha-ching, the sound we all love, order complete. Now, if you've been in the space for a bit, you probably also know that the checkout on almost every Shopify store out there looks pretty much the same. And it's because unless you're on Shopify Plus, there are only a handful of customizations that we can make. Namely, these customizations include changing or replacing the logo, changing the text color. You can also do some minor customizations on the order status page, or you can add a post purchase page by installing one of the corresponding apps out there. All right, now to be fair, there are still quite a few people out there who find these options a bit limiting. And I totally understand that, but also to be fully honest with you, and I might be throwing myself under the bus here a bit, but personally, I think most people shouldn't have the ability to customize the checkout. And that's simply because they have no idea what they're doing. And I'm not even excluding myself here, but think about it this way. The default checkout has been used by millions of merchants at this point, and Shopify literally measures and tracks every single step of the process. And also the checkout has gone through dozens of iterations, A-B split tests, and it's just in the company's best interest to keep the conversion rate as high as humanly possible because Shopify is directly financially incentivized to do so. And if I had to bet on either me, who thinks what looks good, versus Shopify as a multi-billion dollar company that it is with teams of developers and data analysts and much more data points than I have, yeah, I think I would bet on them every single time, right? And I'm also not here to tell anyone what to do, but maybe that's at least a thought to consider before we go. <laughs> before we go on the rant about the default checkout next time. Fair enough, awesome. So then let's actually have a look at what the new checkout extensions are exactly, because despite everything that I just said, every store is still unique. And if you can create, let's say, a good looking upsell section on a Shopify Plus store that's maybe doing a million per year in turnover, then even a 1% uplift, which is like a super conservative estimate, would already be an extra 10K per year. So I think we would all agree that it's still worth to test these things, right? Okay, now in the past, the way you would make customizations on a Shopify Plus store was by texting the support, and then they would give you access to the checkout.liquid file. And that was awesome, because you could just add your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript directly in there. And yeah, you were pretty much in control. So this was an awesome time. However, yeah, you see this is an episode with ups and downs. <laughs> this approach came with two major risks. First, you could introduce breaking changes, which actually happened to me once, and I burned about 15,000 in client's revenue. Um, also have a video about that story. And then second, your code also needed frequent maintenance, because whenever there was an update to the checkout, you just had to catch up with changing elements or changing naming selectors. To overcome these challenges, Shopify now introduced the new checkout extensions, which are basically custom or public apps that you can write, which is great because it also means you can sell and distribute them on the Shopify App Store. And to speed up the development, you will also find pre-built UI components such as text blocks, choice lists, checkboxes, grid layouts, and all these elements are already styled similar to the rest of the checkout so that you can easily create this native or coherent design experience. The new checkout extensions are also a lot more robust and in order to place them, we can use so-called extension points. So these are kind of like predefined placement points throughout the checkout, and we can then anchor our new elements to them. And the best news of all, similar to the theme customizer, merchants will also be able to move your checkout extensions around or replace content by using a new checkout customizer if you coded your elements in a dynamic way. But how epic is that? Okay, so now that we understand what the new checkout extensions are, let's also talk about how we can get practically started, like how we can get started with building them. And a few things we need up front here include Git installed on your local computer, then a Shopify partner account, 
a development store with at least one product in there. Just, just makes it easier to preview the checkout. And while creating that store, it's also super important that we create it under the checkout extensions developer preview. Because at the time I'm recording this, the checkout extensions are not publicly available on all the stores just yet. Yeah, like this is how brand new they are. And you also want to make sure that the email address you enter there is the exact same that you use for your Shopify partner account. And if that's not the case, you might just want to go ahead and create the store and then change it afterwards in the user settings. Um, or at least that's what I had to do in order to authenticate my app later. Um, and yeah, took me a bit of time to figure that out. So it might save you a couple of minutes here. Further, we then also need to have Node.js installed as well as a package manager such as Yarn or NPM. And that's because we're going to be using the new Shopify CLI version 3.0, which is awesome because the installation has been simplified dramatically. And now we can just use one single command to instantiate a new app project and all the dependencies will be installed automatically as well as the CLI itself. Yeah, so that's amazing. And then lastly, we just need an ngrok account to serve the app locally while still under development. And the account is going to be free of charge, but we just need to grab the access token from the dashboard. All right, now assuming that you have everything ready, and of course you will also find links to the best resources for everything that I just mentioned in the description, but assuming you're ready, now it's time to bring up Visual Studio Code. And on my desktop, I already created this development folder here and then brought it up in VS Code. Um, if you don't know how that works, it just you can just click on File here and then Open Folder and then select it. And then next, I want to bring up the terminal. So you can either click on this gear icon here and then Command Palette or just press Control Shift and P and then View Toggle Terminal, all right? And here you can also see that one of the main benefits of bringing up a folder in VS Code is that the working directory gets automatically set to that folder. Yeah, and otherwise you would have to change the directory to navigate there. Okay, so now then let's get started with the first command. And we're just gonna start by typing yarn create at Shopify slash app and then hit enter. Now it's installing some dependencies. So we're just gonna wait for that to finish. Here we need to enter a name for our app. For now we're just gonna go with checkout app 10 points for creativity. <laughs> um, and then we can select which template we're going to be using. Um, and personally, I only tested the Node.js templates and that's also what I'm most familiar with. So let's just select that one. And after all the dependencies are installed, we should find this folder right here, checkout app in my case, containing the initial set of files. And now the next thing I want to do is navigate into that folder. So we're going to do CD as in change directory and then checkout app. And now I want to turn this into an extension project or add an extension to that app basically. So I'm going to type yarn scaffold extension. Hit return. Here we can select the type of extension we want to add and we're interested in the checkout UI. You can also give a name for the extension. So let's just do checkout dash ext. Here we're going to be using react as well. And now let's wait for that to finish. So now we should see that this new extensions folder here was created or to be more precise, the checkout extension. That's how we named it. And yeah, this is pretty much where we find the source files, etc. We can take a look at them in a second. But for now, I just want to change the directory to that folder. And let me actually pull this up here a bit so you can read this better. So let's do change directory and then uh, extension and then checkout extension. Okay. It barely fits here on the screen. Okay, so let's move into that. And now that we're in this folder, the next thing I want to do is run yarn dev. That should bring up the development server. And the first time you do this, you would also be prompted to connect the store, log in and so on and so forth. But we will see that in a second. So let's just do yarn dev. Here we need to log in into our partner account. Press any key to bring up the login page. Let's do that. Selected my partner account and now I was successfully logged in. So we can just close this window. Got to select the right partner account here. Let's use coding with Jan. We are gonna create an entirely new app from scratch. Yes. The app name can just be checkout name. That's perfectly fine. And here we got to select the development store we want to test this in. So I just went ahead and created a new one. Checkout extensions, YouTube demo. How creative is that? And now we need to enter the ngrok token. So we can actually just follow this link right here. 
And they will then take you to this page. And as I said, you just need to create an account. You can also just sign up with Google for simplicity. And he will find your super private access token that you should never share on YouTube. So let's just copy and paste that. Enter it right here and then hit enter. Okay, seems good. You know. Okay, and here we have a partial success. <laughs> so the tunnel was up and running, but it seems like it couldn't authenticate me in my development store because I wasn't properly logged in there. So now I'm just going to follow that link to the admin dashboard and then everything should work. So let's just do that. All right, so now you can see that I'm logged in as the admin in my development store here. Um, and ideally you just use this direct address. So your development store slash admin, because if you log in via the partner dashboard, it's not working that properly. So yeah, just use the direct link. And now I'm going to run yarn dev again and everything should work. So let's actually try that yarn dev. Quickly press any key to log in. Yes. Okay. Successfully authenticated. And now the tunnel is up and running and it failed successfully. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to leave this in um, because that's because, yeah, this time it failed because I don't have a product in there. And I previously, I previously just told you that you need at least one demo product. So it's actually mandatory. Um, so let me just go ahead and create a product and then see you back here. All right, so here we are again. I now just went ahead and created my first demo product. And now let me run yarn dev one more time. So yarn dev. And with a little bit of luck, tunnel is up and running, preview URL, and it seems like this is running perfectly fine now. Awesome. Okay, so now that we are up and running, we can go ahead and preview our extension. So let me scroll up a bit here uh, because there we find the preview link. So let's follow that. So now it loaded the checkout and here's my test product. This is my development store and the normal checkout that we all know. But this banner right here is already coming from our extension. And let me actually show you that. So in VS Code, if we just navigate into our checkout extension folder and then source index.jsx, we can see that we have the banner right here. And yeah, now you could go in here change anything, start building your own app and pretty much take it from here. But maybe just as a quick example in terms of what you could get started with, um, you could start playing around with some of the UI components that we, that we saw earlier. Um, so maybe instead of this banner, you want to have a checkbox, then you would just go in here, see the example and let's just switch to the React code. So then you would see that we need to import the checkbox element and this is how you render it. So I'm just going to copy this markup here for now and then import the checkbox element. And then we can just replace this banner, for example. Uh, let me actually wrap this in parentheses. Okay. And if we save that now, everything should get hot reloaded. And instead of the banner, we now find our new checkbox element right here. And it already seamlessly fits into the design. Um, and that really shows the power of these pre-built UI components and how they can speed up the development. Beyond that, you can also start playing around with different extension points. Uh, right now, everything was set to dynamic. So that means it can be like moved around in the new customizer, but you can also use static extension points and then lock your features into one place. Or you could also go ahead and follow this very in-depth tutorial on how to build a small product upsell section, um, like we see in this video right here. So at the very bottom, you see you might also like and then add to cart. Um, yeah, that's going to be an awesome tutorial. And then you can pretty much take it from here and start building out your own app idea. And I think now's the best time to get in because it's still super early. And if you ever wanted to create your own app, this might be the opportunity you have waited for. And you can also keep an eye on the roadmap for when app submissions will be accepted or for when the checkout extensions will be available on the first set of Shopify Plus stores. All right, and that's it for this first video on how to get started with Shopify app extensions. And as long as you're going to invite me for a coffee or a beer when your app hits massive success, I sleep fine and I just hope you find some value in these videos. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Check out the resources in the description and make sure to subscribe because then I catch you in the next. Have an awesome day. Bye.